Welcome back to the channel. It's time to do an update of champions, tiers, and rankings. This is only our second one. I took a lot of your feedback and the things you said. I know a lot of you loved the rankings and that's, impo that's important. It means a lot to me. But there was also some people who clearly either just didn't understand it or maybe I didn't get my points across well. So we have some updated rankings. We have some champions that deserved promotions. And we also had what I thought was a better way and a more efficient way to get the point across. Before we jump into them too much, I do want to scroll to the bottom here and let you know that the champions are ranked within their tiers. Bold means that there's been a change since the last time we've done a video. Maybe they're new to the game, they've been updated, or maybe they deserved a promotion or a demotion. I don't think any spreadsheet's going to be able to tell you everything you need to know. And so this game is so complex. I just am ranking them in best I think, who I would like to have, how valuable I think they are with the very simple designation of, is their awakened ability important? Is the ranking dependent upon that? After that, I think you have to watch a video and I would encourage you to watch some of mine. I think they're good and they're definitely my honest opinion. And go, you can look at the playlists we have. I've cataloged all of our videos, all of my videos. But if you don't like those, or even better, I think just to have another reference before you put your valuable resources into ranking up another champion, Go look at the reviews of KT1 and Dark Zodiac. I can confidently recommend both of them. Yes, I'm friends with KT1. We've played alongside each other off and on for quite a while now. But Dark Zodiac has no clue who I am. You could tell him Vega sent you and he would say, who? Uh, I just happened to really like his channel. I think he knew a lot about it and I thought his videos were well done. And this was all before I started my own. So. You know, take that for what it is. And then the last thing I really want everyone to see is we have this brand new ability of being made a horseman. If you can make the champion a horseman, they're good. Really good. All right, great. You are still here. Make sure you hit like and subscribe so you catch the updated rankings, the war videos, of course, the champion showcases, and the one I know of, so many of you like, I like them too, the crystal openings. And, and here's a little tip. I'm always going to update this. You can check Twitter. You can check me on the comment section after this, but the best way is Discord. That's where I'm going to be able to communicate much better. And we have a lot of smart people who've already joined, quite a few. And the conversations are great and detailed. And that's where we can answer the, the nuanced questions. But another really fun way to know, this is how much Vega wants this champion or likes him or values them is watch the crystal openings. There's a reason why we only opened 50 for Dragon, uh, not Dragon Man, I like Dragon Man 4. Uh, but check out how many and how hard we went for Red Goblet. I think that lets you know what I thought of the guy. So, all right, let's, let's not necessary, let's not be mean, let's jump right into it. We got top shelf. Those of you who are new, top shelf means this is as good as it gets. I don't care if you just ranked up the five star, took him to rank five, six, 200, you are still pumped up if in the very next six star crystal you opened, you get the same champion. That's how good top shelf is. That's how good you have to be. Doom, we all know how great Doom is. Clairvoyant, she should have been ranked there to begin with. That's why she's in bold. She should have been ranked there. I was trying to show how great Doom was, but it didn't make a lot of sense, right? I do think Doom is superior. I know some people disagree. Claire is awesome. My buddy DLL shows me on a, like, a weekly basis how awesome she is and the fights he takes with her. Yes, suicides make her better in my opinion, but he doesn't even run suicides and he's doing awesome stuff with her. Magic, I don't think I've put out a war video that doesn't have magic. I don't know why I didn't have her there to begin with. She should have been there. She deserves to be there. I'm even bringing magic to war now too. Moving down, uh, we're just gonna talk about the bolds uh, so that this video isn't half an hour long. So Red Magneto, if you've been paying attention to my channel, you know that the I think it was the day his buff went live. I tested him, was amazed, and then just tested him day after day after day, took him to R3, and then went and just dominated some complicated fights in war. He's a problem solver. You can stick him on these mutant teams and he just solves the problems. Or you can just take him. You don't even need to worry about synergies or mutants. And he just solves problems. He's awesome. I love the fact that Magneto is that good in this game. Archangel. Archangel should have been there all along too. I think KT1 was the first one to point it out that I heard anyways, that the meta is actually shifting to bring him back into it. So many times in games, older champions get moved out of the meta because the game just passes them by due to complexity or what have you. 
But with him, with immunities, immunities is what moved him out of the meta or moved him down in these rankings. But now Champion's coming out with incinerate immunity and cold snap immunity and shock immunity, which is great, we need them, but they're not poison and bleed immune. So a lot of these newer, tougher defenders that we're seeing are not poison and bleed immune, meaning Archangel moves right back up. Uh, Quake, Human Torch, Captain Infinity War, Void. Void should have been there all along. He has a, uh, a slow play style. I think you need to be an excellent player to utilize him. Uh, but I see so many great fights being taken with him. Line Crew comes to mind immediately. Saliz, FaZe. These guys are using Void. And, uh, I mean, the original one for me was actually Godman. Uh, but um, these guys have been showing me Void fights for years now. And they're not stopping. They're not slowing down. Void should have been there as well. I think it's a high learning curve. I think you need to be very talented and skilled at the game to use him. But if you are and you can... Boyd's your guy. Gilly99, she should have been there originally. I use her in uh, in AQ, map 7, all the time. She saves me so many pots. And then we're seeing in the war video, she's being brought in. And not just for fights that don't require uh, the non-crit ability. For boss killing, for rage, all kinds of things. She's great. Guardian, Guardian, I've got my eye on him. Now, I'm an adult. I can admit if I make a mistake, and I'm worried that I may have made one by putting him there right, right away. I was very excited. I do think he is awesome, but part of what makes you, as we just talked about with Archangel, part of what makes you either top shelf supreme premium is what's going on in the game around you. And I'm surprised I am not being able to bring him into war more. Uh, I'm not seeing him in Hoon War. Uh, I'm not seeing him in AQ. I have been using him in some questing lately, and he is doing excellently. I was able to bring him to off-season war a few times, and he did fantastic. That being said, if I'm not seeing him more, more utilized now, he's in the featured six-star crystal in the next two months, we'll move him down to super premium. I apologize if you ranked him up based on my uh, top shelf, and that's on me. I've learned from it. I'm going to make these champions earn that a bit more, even if I love them right away. They're going to start maybe a notch uh, one or two down below, and I'll reference that they have, I think, the potential to move up. So like I said, I'm an adult. I can admit I made a mistake. I'm not ready to say that yet because I'm not sure I did. But if I did, we'll move him down. Uh, that being said, keep an eye out. Going to have some videos of him doing some pretty incredible things. Some very cool things. I think some definitely top shelf things very soon. Uh, no changes in skill or cosmic. Going back to super premium. Longshot. Longshot has impressed the heck out of me in variant 5. Let me know that he was not just this huge damage. And sometimes in fights where it wasn't his niche, his niche, he still did excellently. Uh, I'm curious to, to, he's one of these champions where I'd like to see him more. I want to do more, uh, but time, time is a limiting factor, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, moved on to Xavier. Xavier is, is, is the, the only reason Xavier is not in top shelf is because of me learning from Guardian. I love Xavier. I don't think it's being talked about enough that he is a great evade and miscounter. He I think he's great not only because he just does it, but because he doesn't have to put a debuff on the champion and he doesn't need to hit a certain combo. He does not even need to hit the defender. One of the problems with a lot of these evade and miscounters is that you have to land a five hit combo and end it in a medium, or you have to land a heavy, or you have to knock the champion down. Well, that's sometimes really hard to do when the defender can evade or miss. So I, I think I think that's something that gives Xavier even more use. There is a little bit of power control too. It's not It's not magic. I'm not saying he is. But I used it myself in a very difficult fight against the uh, Axe 6 uh, Rag Thor. And it saved me. It saved my butt. So I And the damage, no one can argue with that. And then the synergies. I love Xavier. I think we're going to see him move up that super premium and possibly get himself into that top shelf as we continue on and he gets more and more utilized in the game. Then we have Apocalypse. Oh, Emma. Emma's great. I think the issue with her and why I don't have her higher is I think even excellent players can sometimes end up in the wrong spot with her. She can do a lot. There's a lot in her kit, but sometimes I think people, they want to be in the diamond form or they want to be in the telepath form and they end up in the other one. And it's very hard to control. Apocalypse. Apocalypse is new to the game, and I think he's unlike any other champion we have seen. He's not 
uh, Fury, and he's not Mr. Fantastic. And I think that was a great way to frame the question before we had him in the game. He's his own unique champion. And I here's the thing with him. I think he can be the, one of the best champions in the game, but he needs, absolutely needs, Cable or Sinister or Kang, I think, to have that designation. Not to be great, you can build him up. I know you can, okay? Uh, but I want to test him more. I took mine to, uh, to rank two already. Uh, we're going to test him out. I love what he can do, and I love how he pairs. I think they did a great job of creating a champion that's very much what we saw, at least in the movie, right? He needs those mutants, and they need him. Namor, <laughs> uh, you know, I... I moved Namor up. I I personally just don't think Namor is that great. I think he's got his his niche uh, with the damage back, and I think he's great at it. I just don't think that's that prevalent in the game. I don't think that's this problem that we all sat around thinking like, wow, you know, just every day I, I go into Marvel Contest of Champions and I'm hitting champions and they do damage to me when I do that. So if you were, then I, I'm so happy Neymar was made. I am like elated because this is a game and it should be fun. And if that was a problem you had, then, then you know, I'm glad the game was made fun for you by finally getting Neymar. Um, he can do great damage. I'm not saying that he can't. It's just all these champions can or the vast majority of them can. So I think he's great. I think he's very good at what he does. Um... And so I think he's appropriately ranked. I don't see him ever moving up, and, and unless they put out more champions that have a similar ability, I don't see him him being moved down. So I think he's valuable. You're lucky if you get him. You would need to take him up to that high sig, of course. Um, but yeah, that's it. So, and then we will continue to move, looking for the bold Dragon Man. Uh, you know, I'm happy to see that they they fixed Dragon Man. They gave it so that you can see the defender when he's cornered because it's such an important part of his kit. As a result, I don't think we saw him really properly tested. I don't I don't think we're seeing what he can do. I think there was just such a fundamental flaw in in utilizing him and taking advantage of his kit that I don't think we know. So he's in premium, very open to moving him up. I don't see. I don't think we're going to move him down. There's just too much in there for him to be moved down. And remember, for those of you who didn't see the previous video, Premium is an excellent champion. I want you to think about it like this, right? Because I know we're always just seeing God tier and, and, and these various uh, various variations of God tier, right? But And I know that's just a video game thing and no shade is meant by saying this. Uh, but for me, if you're God tier, that's as good as it gets. So if I put like God call tier and God premium tier or God pre super premium, if you're struggling with this, I'd like you to just put the word God in front of it. And then I think you'll feel really good that your favorite champions in that third tier, um, because you'll realize it's meant to be really good. And so think of it this way. Premium is you're out on a date, right? You, you, you really like this person. You've taken them out on a date and you go up to the, the theater. You're going to see a play. And the person behind the counter says, well, uh, we have regular seating and we have premium seating. Which would you like? Well, of course, you you know you want to impress this person. And so there's that temptation to get premium th seating. But you're thinking, how expensive is that going to be? Think of this that way. The, like when you get this champion, you just got a premium champion. That is awesome. You're wondering, like, how good are they going to be? That's how it is meant here. Right? So... Uh, I think Dragman's still going to be premium, and Tigra definitely is. The learning curve with her is steep. You have to learn, for what I can tell, every single possible defender, the spacing, and how to fight them. But if you can, the reward appears to be huge. My buddy Taknatezi and Havoc keeps showing me amazing fights with her. I am impressed. And uh, hey, Tak, if you want to submit a video, I would love it. It'd be cool. Uh, White Magneto. If his name was not Magneto, I think we would be talking about how great he is and what a wonderful buff he received. I think he's just getting overshadowed by his big, uh, big red, really amazing brother, right? But White Magneto can do a lot. He brings a lot of synergies to the table. I've been really enjoying taking him and Guardian together. And uh, with uh, Xavier, they just work well. And I think once that, if and when, that pre-fight ability gets fixed. I think we're going to see White Magneto move up. I'm looking forward to getting some videos out on him. Cable and Wolverine. The reason I have them there, and they're not just under the the uh, the broad blanket of if you're a horseman, you're great, is I think these are champions that you might be willing to rank up. And, uh, and Cable more so because he's part of getting Apocalypse uh, ramped up quickly. 
but I think these are champions that you would be willing to put your resources in due to either effectiveness, usability, or just their plain old fun. It's awesome to be Wolverine, right? And so they are there on their own. I don't think they deserve to be premium. But if you can get that Apocalypse and pair them him with these champions, I think you're going to have a great time. I was amazed by what Cable can do. I'll, you know, I'm gonna. I keep linking it in the in the channel because I want people to see how great Cable can be. Um, but there's that. That's why that is there. Squirrel Girl. I wish she could be higher. I think there's just some fundamental flaws with her as we take her into farther and deeper content, harder and more difficult content. And a lot of it came from keeping Tippy on the defender and keeping your combo high. You needed to, to be able to do both to really utilize her. That being said. I think she's excellent. I think she's great. I think she's part, or I know she's part of some excellent, excellent synergy teams, including that perfect block team, which is a big deal. Elsa, I keep waiting to see the videos. There, um, you know what? Actually, I did. I met. I was introduced to a guy who was really helpful, friendly. I believe his name was Rob. He had taken his Elsa to rank three, and he was doing some awesome stuff. Um, the thing with Elsa is, is I believe she is suffering from. I think she was supposed to be a star. I think she was going to be a top shelf champion, but I think Kabam realized they were taking the game in a direction that we weren't enjoying. We weren't enjoying these massive attack values and we weren't enjoying these overly punishing nodes. And she was going to be excellent to handle high attack values because of that evade counter. And she was also going to be excellent for nodes like ebb and flow uh, intercept. And those nodes got got nerfed significantly and as a result now you don't need to bring her in to take that node i just took uh well i guess it was evan flow knockdown but i did it with magic and i've seen so many war videos of of magic and doom and other champions taking those nodes because the protection was nerfed so badly and if you're in that war every spot is valuable and so if you've brought in elsa for just this one fight that's that's great, but if you could also take that fight with a Magic or a Doom or an Omega Red, now you have that Magic or that Doom or that Omega Red to use elsewhere. So I think Elsa's very good. I see why people like her. I think she's a bit of a victim of, of the game not maybe going where it was intended to go, and that might be a good thing for all of us. So that's why she's ranked where she's at. I think she's premium, but I think that's it. Uh, Black Widow Deadly Origin, I've just not seen her used more. She's very new, and that could be the reason. Strands uh, put a video together with me for uh, a bit of a, a you know fun challenge against Sunspot in Diss Track AQ. And if I'm honest, I think I think Black Widow, I think out damaged Sunspot. So that's saying something. Um, and that's it. Uh, I think for the updates and the changes, I'm really looking forward to um, getting Cosmic Ghost Rider. I, I think we're going to go pretty big for him. I am worried he's going to suffer from the same problem as Cole Obsidian, Proxima Midnight, and Hella, and that there's going to be some amazing videos of him being tremendous damage. But I'm worried that when the nodes are complex and the defenders complex, and we're not able to use, trigger all of his abilities, how big of a decrease in his damage are we going to see? If we're only seeing a 25% decrease, then he's going to be great. He's going to be really, really great. But if we're seeing a 50% decrease or 75% decrease, or if trying to trigger his abilities is just so difficult that you end up dying, I don't know. So I want to, I, I kind of, I want to see him before we go too crazy on him. And uh, Red Goblin, I'm not fussed about. So let's see. Those are my predictions. Those are my prognostications for where I think they're going to end up. But most importantly, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this is a quick and nice reference for you. As we as the videos go on, they'll of course get shorter because there'll be less to explain. But if you have questions, hit me up. You can hit me up. You can try me on Twitter, but best is going to be the Discord server, or you can leave a comment in this video, and I will do my best to get to it. And that's why I think the Discord is the best, is because there's other people there, a lot of really smart folks, and I will be checking the Discord. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope this is a great reference, and I really do want to know what you think. Take care. I hope you either learned something, were entertained, or even better, a little bit of both. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow on Twitter at VegaGaming583. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.